letter. Notice of this meeting was advertised in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Roll call. Ms. Jackson? Present. Ms. Tenney? Present. Mr. Thompson? Present. Ms. Trueblood? Present. Mr. Allen? Present. This meeting is now called to order. The minutes followed by the clerk. Uh, we will be voting on these separately. Is there a motion to approve? The meeting minutes for October 21st, 2015. I'll make the motion to approve October 21st, 2015 minutes. Is there a second? For October 21st. Is there a second for the regular meeting, October 21st, 2015 minutes? I'll second that. I was here. That was my last meeting. <laughs> Sunshine, please pull the council. Ms. Jackson? Yeah. Ms. Sinney? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Tompkins? I have to abstain since I wasn't a member at that time. Ms. Trueblood? Same, I wasn't here that day. Mr. Allen? Yes. <coughs> the regular meeting minutes for November 4th, 2015. Is there a motion to approve? A motion to approve the minutes from November 4th, 2015. Sunshine, is there a second? I'm s is there a second? I'll second them. Even though I wasn't here, I did listen to them. So when you so say you listen to asking. online? I listen to them online. Audio. So that's what I was asking Andy. Sunshine, please pull the council. Ms. Trueblood? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? I have to abstain. I abstain. I was in um, virtual hospital having my surgery and I wasn't anywhere near a computer to read or felt like reading um, the minutes or listening to an audio for the record. Mr. Allen? Yes. Is there a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes for December 2nd, 2015? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second the motion to approve. December 2nd. Sunshine, please pull the council. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Ms. Trueblood? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Stinney? That's the That's the fourth. Second. Mr. Allen? Yes. Wait, hold on one second. That was December 2nd. December 2nd. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get it together. <laughs> I have read the audio, I have read the minutes, piece by piece, word by word, and uh, I'll thank the council a little bit later on as we go down the road. So my vote is yes. Okay. Uh, moving on. Reports and communications followed by the clerk. Uh, is there any discussion for the reports that received, re we received from the clerk and administration? Chief, I'm sorry, but I, I, I want to bring up again, just like I did at the last council meeting, I'm looking at the, the number of non-parking summits for October, uh, 263. I still think that that's pretty light. I think we can do a lot more, a lot better uh, in some of the tra traffic enforcement. Is there, oh, any, is there any other discussion on, on the reports? If not, is there a motion to accept the reports collectively? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. 
Sunshine, please pull the council. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Miss Jackson? Yes. Miss Trueblood? Yes. Miss Kinney? I have read and yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ordinances for second reading, public hearing, and or adoption. Ordinance number 18-2015. Ordinance of the Township of Pemberton, amending chapter 132 of the Code of the Township of Pemberton, entitled Noise. This portion of the meeting is now open to the public. Seeing no hands, this portion of the meeting is now closed. Uh, I see the police chief here. Would you would you like to come up and and say a few things before we make our vote? Good evening, council. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Some months ago, I got together with the business administrator, Mr. Gonzalez, and the mayor, and after reviewing the noise ordinance and having some complaints actually from our citizens about different noise issues, some of them substantiated, some not, but we reviewed the ordinance and I gave my concerns to Mr. Gonzalez and he, along with Mr. Mayer, uh, reworked the ordinance, we collaborated on it and made some adjustments. <clears throat> the ordinance that was put into place some years ago is clearly for persistent industrial uh, issues. Uh, I had to by, uh, well, the department, I wasn't involved in the, the purchase at the time, uh, we had to purchase pretty sophisticated noise measuring equipment, a wind meter, you had a table to go through, and we had one piece of equipment, either in the supervisor's vehicle or at the station, however it was deployed, so if you had a noise issue, you had to get it to that end of town, and I, I don't believe that was what the intent was, either through the state or for our ordinance. Uh, we have had several complaints of uh, persistent noisy neighbors, uh, loud radios and cars. So that's what I think uh, Mr. Gonzalez and Mr. Bayer have come up with here, where it separates the two into uh, something that, that is the nuisance type noise and something that's pervasive, something that would be driven by either construction or a factory. So just to let you know, I do support this ordinance, and I think it gives us teeth again to go out and enforce the quality of life issues that we have in our community. Thank you. I, I have a question. Certainly. Do you mind if I ask now? Absolutely. Okay. Back there in the day when we had um, the equipment and they were using, they, first of all, they were trained to use that type of equipment to get out there and, and uh and I forget the word I would like to use, but anyway, um, judge the, the noise level from the houses and that sort of thing. And you said that was basically, and really it was basically for like the houses. I mean, how do you judge a car that's sitting at the 7-Eleven, hypothetically speaking, right. and the radio is so loud you can hear it across there, it would park a lot over there. In fact, you can feel it as much uh, as you yeah, can the boom, 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 that sort of thing. Right. My, I have a question. I know this is day-to-day -day operations with the um, administration, but it says the noise um, control officer. Right. That's in your control, or who looks? Well, it, it's 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 a designation by law. It, that could okay. be a code enforcement officer. It's oh. not necessarily a sworn officer. It's someone, if you read the definition, that's received the training. And let's let's go on to the training again and okay. that equipment that we bought. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the equipment, first of all, has to be sent off to a company in Michigan once a year and be calibrated. We can't even get it calibrated through the state of New Jersey. It has to go back to the manufacturer. Okay. The officers, at some expense, we either have to send them up to Rutgers where they teach the course or we pay an instructor. It's somewhere around $100 a, a student to get them certified. And they do a minimum of 10 people in any class. Uh, and, and I'm saying $100, I believe that's what the, the, the amount is, but it's an expense nonetheless. And I can tell you, Ms. Stinney, in all the time that we had this ordinance and the equipment, I could not find that we wrote one ticket, one summons using that, that equipment. So it, 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 it was, you almost had to be an engineer to come up and say, okay, it's this time of day, it has to be this decibel level, so let's yeah, measure this. Level. And then there's, uh, yeah, the, the, the wind has to be either st stable, you have to document how fast the wind is going. Uh, for the matter of a, a, a noise complaint, I, I think that really 
Uh, what we had, uh, I if we had a pervasive problem with that, with a, 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 some sort of industry in town or a construction thing that was disturbing the neighborhood, we had the ability to use the Burlington County Health Department who have noise control officers okay. for them to come out and do that. So, and we still have that today. So, but really, in, in, in a, a 2 o'clock in the morning call, we're not calling the Burlington County Health Department to come out and measure sure. noise. By the time they got out there, who knows? But the, the, the first part of that, that, that particular ordinance was just unmanageable, okay. unworkable, and this, I think, gives us, again, something to work with, something to enforce. Thank you for your expertise, and thank you for your information. Thank Chief. you, Chief. There's a lot of this that's kind of subjective to what is loud and what isn't loud, okay? And I, I kind of brought this up at the last meeting. If, if you've got a person with a hearing impairment and they're sitting in their house during a hot summer day and their windows are open and they got the TV cranked up because they can't hear it, then their neighbors are going to be calling the police on them. Well, and, and that's a concern of mine. It, it's a real concern because I, I know there's some folks that live around me that have hearing problems. Huh. And I hear their TV when I'm walking down the street. But it's not a nuisance to me. I understand that. But some folks might not be the same forgiven. way. Right. But it, 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 at the, for the, the benefit of one, you're disturbing possibly many. So this is where, and there are other avenues that a person that is hearing impaired, they would be able to use different equipment to listen to their television at a higher volume, whether it be earphones. In this day of technology, they're really... Some of the folks aren't aware of it or can't afford it. And, and, no. and I, I don't mind. I would hope that my uh, men and women would give that type of information. Or even we could, if it's a, a, an elderly person, we can get them together with the, the county office on aging and, and you know, the other thing that out. I had some serious heartburn with this on is, uh, shoot, forgive me, snowblowers. It says you can't operate snowblowers after dark. Um, I don't recall that specific part of the ordinance, but uh, uh, if you give me a, a, a page and a section, I'll, I'll, I'll look actually, at it. Uh, it's the last page, I believe. Chief, it's, last page. Like, it's in number, it, well, number it's 12. category number 12 for blower. Or 13. Loud section 132-11. Loud, disturbing, and listening noise, and subsection 12 says blowers. Well, 13 actually calls out uh, lawnmowers, oh, yeah. snowblowers, throwers, operation of any internal combustion engine, lawnmower, <laughs> or electric power lawnmower, or any snowblower or snow thrower before 7 a.m. or after dark on a weekday, or before 8 a.m. or after dark on a weekend. Now, a lot of folks with real paying jobs don't get off those jobs until 5, 6 o'clock at night. And this time of year where you would use a snowblower, it gets dark at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Understood. But the line has to be drawn somewhere. And I don't think my men and women are going to go out for that one particular incident. I think if they found that it was, a per again, a pervasive problem where the person just disregarded this and couldn't work out some sort of compromise, those same people have jobs during the day that they're trying to get some sleep. So where do we draw the line, right. Ms. Tompkins? I... I, I we, we have to at least have something to drive around for a while to see how it works. I, I don't see that this would be that much of an inconvenience to one. I'd rather have it be 9 o'clock at night than dark. Well, that's something you would have to work out with administration. Well, no, because it hasn't been passed yet. <laughs> but that's where I have a problem. And then the fines. And you don't have nothing to do with the fines. But, you know, I think the fines are kind of high. $3,000. I'd rather see it 250 the first time, 500 and then 750 I defer. And that's, yeah, something we would work into it. But uh, thank you. And then I, that's all I have for you. But I do have some questions for the council, if, if I can. Um, it's the state laws. Yeah, but it's not. Right. I think Mr. Tompkins on the on the penalties. I don't. Andy, it's Jack. Not up here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it, the 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 penalty provision is just the standard provision that for violation of a municipal ordinance the uh, a fine can be up to two thousand dollars, which is state law. And the community but, service, I agree with. Right, the that is service. solely within the discretion of the municipal court judge, and I am sure that for a noise violation, the first time that there, there would not be a fine at that level. That's just a standard provision in the code. I, I, I know, so but I was looking through the code book and I saw similar fines where it was staggered. Well, we didn't. Here, you didn't do that. Here, it would be up to the 
to court, right? right. I mean, do you right. impose a fine on the te on the summons? No, we do not. Ah. No, that's we it's, it's find public laws. We don't find it. It's typically up to the judge. So you would go to court and lose yeah. a day of work for that one too. Sure. Yes. I know, Chief. I'm sorry. Is that the same for the speeders on the road, Mr. Thompson? <laughs> yes. It's his life. Thank you. But uh, Thank you. I, I do have a question for Thank the council. Um, <laughs> the chief brought up that he brought it to the administration. The administration drafted all this stuff. I really thought as us, the governing body, we were responsible for drafting ordinances, sending it to Andy, our, Mr. Barrett, our solicitor, and then we worked the ordinances and passed them. I thought the uh, administration had nothing to do with passing or originating township ordinances. Can I answer that a little? Sure. Well, I'll just start, Jack, by saying yeah. it works both ways. Okay. So there's been a number of ordinances really over the last years that have come through administration to council for, to consider. Um, and then I work with the, you know, the Mr. Gonzalez and the mayor's office just to, and then we present it to council. That's not uncommon like here. This is an administration of a an issue that comes to the police department, which comes <coughs> under the arm of the administ you know, administration. Mm -hmm. and then they work together and present it to you. And then right. you could mold it any way you like. That's ultimately your decision. Okay. But there's nothing certainly untoward about it originating either from this side, from council, or from administration. Either way is fine. I, 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 in fact, it's beneficial because, um, as we know, administration conducts a day-to-day -day and works with the department heads. So we're, we're actually receiving input from department heads as well as what they see. Right, but if you, if you read through there, we are, we are responsible for the le legislation and writing the ordinances. Well, you would be responsible for it because you introduced it. If you, went, you wouldn't have been responsible for it if you didn't introduce it or get to this point. It was introduced. I didn't vote for it. Well, that would be. I'm talking about council as a whole, not you personally. That's my question. Council, um, is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? I just want to say the point was very well taken, um, Councilman. And um, it was something that I had not, you know, thought of, but point very well taken. I, I just wanted to say that. Is there a motion to adopt ordinance number 18-2015? I motion to adopt ordinance 18-2015. And I'll second it. Sunshine, please pull the council. Ms. Trueblood? Yes. Ms. Stinney? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? No. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ordinance number 19-2015, Ordinance of the Township of Pemberton, establishing the residency hiring criteria and preferences for the selection of police officers for employment within the Township of Pemberton. This portion of the meeting is now open to the public. This portion of the meeting is now closed to the public. Uh, Chief, do you want to come forward again for, mm -hmm. for this ordinance? <coughs> well, again, Council. I don't know that I support this ordinance with the same enthusiasm that I do the noise ordinance but I do support it. We love having the hometown men and women of this, uh, this community do well and come and work in the place where they grew up or they moved to or somehow came associated with Pemberton Township, but we're struggling. We're finding it very, very difficult to find good men and women to bring into the agency. We, we just recently got a list and uh, if, if you'll indulge me for a minute. The number one guy on our list had scored, his, like he was number one for as a resident in Pemberton Township, but his score statewide was 8,251. If we go down to where we, the, the, the top three people on this particular list that we're just finishing up with, the number four person that was a resident of Pemberton Township was 16,283 on the state list. Our next gentleman, who was a Mount Laurel resident, was 196 on the list. I, I believe that the, the, the men and women that desire to become police officers uh, in this town can do better than that. But right now, we're, and if they do, they'll score that high 
and we'll be able to get to them. And, and again, I would be very happy to bring them on board. But we're missing out on a larger pool of minorities, women, and people that bring special skills, like a gentleman that I had in my office today that brings investigative abilities. He's working for TD Bank right now. He's working fraud cases and money laundering. And you'd be surprised how much of, we, of that we do at this level. He's got Army experience, and he's a minority. It, 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 I currently have three minorities in the police department, and our push, I've contacted Ms. Jackson in her capacity as a member of the Lake Valley Civic Association at Swinney, people from the churches around town, the college, uh, Hispanic organizations, encourage your people to take the test. I spoke to a young man that uh, my kids grew up with, and he's now uh, a teacher's aide or, or a teaching in some capacity and working with the sports teams uh, at the high school. And I said to him, you know, you're exactly what we're looking for. And he says, Chief, no disrespect. Uh, I, I, have the, the, uh, I, I support the police officers. That's not me. So we're finding that it, it, in this day and age when there's a lot of controversy surrounding law enforcement, <laughs> We have to expand our horizons and the pool that we're looking at, and that's what this ordinance will do by allowing us to use a county list. I will tell you that Mount Laurel that I just, my peer in Mount Laurel, Dennis Cribben, Chief Dennis Cribben, just went the other direction. He was on the state list, <coughs> and he's trimming it down to a county list, because he knows the talent pool is here, but he's getting so many North Jersey people that are taking the test and scoring higher than people in Burlington County. It's the, it's the reverse of the example that I just shared with you. Mm -hmm. That he just, his council just voted to trim it down to a county list as opposed to, and he was fortunate enough to get a number of Mount Laurel residents on that list. So I, I don't think we're going to completely, by doing this, completely discount our residents. I just think they're, they're going to have to do better prep and be... Uh, do better on the test. I don't know if there's any other way to to yeah. address it. So I do support this, um, and I think it's going to serve the township well. And it, it doesn't exclude township residents. No, not at all. Not at all. It just we would like Opens to see up the pool. It, we would like to see them score higher so they're reachable. Chief, if I may. Go ahead. Um, I, I might be a little gray on part of this. When they get hired, do they have to become a, a, a resident? In no, town? they do not. Okay, so even even now with our resident with with our officers that are residents when they're hired, normally after that one year or eighteen month whatever that vesting period is, a lot of these officers move out of town anyway. Correct? They can uh, uh, technically move out the day after they're hired. Um, and I will tell you, and this is not for any other reason other than it's the truth. Uh, when the mayor and I interviewed. Uh, potential candidates, he asks every one of them, will you, will you consider moving into the township? Not that that's a condition of employment, but he, he poses the question. So we would like to see that. Mm -hmm. Chief, piggybacking off of Jack, how many of our officers still live in the township? It's a Honestly. handful. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. Mm -hmm. It would take me a while to go down the list. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're up to badge 124. I pass these kids in the hallway now. I, you work here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not a lot. Can we it, count X, police mayor? Can you make it A? <laughs> <laughs> and, and they, they, they only have to be a resident at the time they apply for the civil service test. Once Through they the apply, process. once they apply for the test. Civil service doesn't care where you live after that. Civil service doesn't require it. I have another question. I don't know if it's a dumb question or not, but can you, when the tests are being taken, can you actually tell how many of township residents actually take the test? No. No? I can't okay. tell how many took the test. I can see how many passed and where they're okay. lined up in okay. the, 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 their rankings by civil service. I was just wondering. I have a question. How do you handle negative comments? Um, example. Um, I was, was, was speaking with a, a person from Times River, mm -hmm. okay, and um, basically he was saying, I, no way in the world I would be on the police force here in Pemberton Township. How do you handle those negative comments? Same way I, when I spoke to this young man this morning. Mm -hmm. Every agency has its issues. Sure. 
But if you come to Pemberton Township, you learn how to be a good cop. That's you what you really say to them? To. I certainly do. Okay. Uh, it, it, we have, we, Mr. Tompkins mentioned the low number of uh, it was either moving or uh, moving violations right. this month. Uh -huh. But we're going to surpass 26,000 calls for service this year. Uh -huh. Now, not all of them are uh, 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 violent crimes or, or uh, things to that, but uh -huh. every one of them is important and every one of them is documented, uh -huh. where the borough may have three or 4,000 calls for a year. Uh -huh. So you do work uh -huh. here, and I can tell you the times of the day when we're our busiest. That's not what I'm here for, to talk about now. Uh -huh. But if the, the person that's considering becoming an officer wants to learn his craft uh -huh. and learn search and seizure, case law, uh, it, the, <coughs> from soup to nuts in law enforcement, this is a place you can come and do it, I, and it's I, very satisfying. Yeah, I just kind of like wanted to know how you would handle that. It's the same as if you were a teacher, and uh, you would try to encourage, um, example, me from Willingboro, encourage, right. you know, teacher, won't you come on down to Pemberton? You know, we got good students. We got this, that, and yeah, the other. You know, trying to en encourage. I just, that's how I would handle. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know how you handled it. And I know you've heard many, many times I wouldn't come to Pemberton. I hear people now screaming and hollering, I'm moving out of Pemberton. <laughs> but I just wanted to, I know. I just wanted to hear your, you know, comment on how you handle that. Which I'm sure happens in any township. It does. Well, that's life. People so Willingboro, right. Burlington City, yeah. Beverly, mm -hmm. they all get yeah. the same it's thing. Like, yeah, well, I'm, if, I'm if just hypothetically if, speaking. But if, yeah. if, if a person's looking to be a police officer and mm -hmm. they don't want to work, mm -hmm. well, we don't want them here anyway. Right. Well, I don't care about the other towns. Not to be <laughs> not to be sarcastic to you, Jason, but I frankly really don't care about the other towns. You know, like I say, come to Pemberton, come to Pemberton, come move to Pemberton. That's that's my philosophy. Mm -hmm. Come to Pemberton. You know, we got good schools. We have um, good township here. We got a lot of things going on. I sat with a I sat with the parents last night, a uh, night before last for a basketball game, and they were like, "We don't have anything going on for our kids." I said, "That's not true." That's not true. Check with recreation. We got it going on down here. So, you know, I know while other towns have whatever they need to, to have, I'm really concerned about Pemberton Township. Understood. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Anybody else? Thank you. <coughs> Is there a motion to adopt ordinance number 19-2015? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Sunshine, please pull the council. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Trueblood? Yes. Ms. Finney? And yes, and thank you, Chief, for your explanation mm -hmm. of that. You, it's, it's, it's wonderful to, to get the explanation. It helps support mm -hmm. what you're, you're mm -hmm. trying to get us to understand. So thank you very much, and I wholeheartedly support that. Mr. Allen? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Ordinances for introduction. Ordinance number 20-2015, Ordinance of the Township of Pemberton amending the official zoning map to reflect various zoning map adjustments to implement the master plan re-examination report adopted September 4th, 2014. We have uh, Mr. Rick Reagan here, um, our township planner, and he will tell us a little bit about this ordinance. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, the Council. Uh, Rick Reagan, for the record, uh, usually we don't, we're, we're, this is not the meeting to talk about any of the substance of the map, but just to let you know about the process. Um, you may remember uh, the zoning map was started uh, some time ago, and at, from that original time, uh, Adams, Raymond, and Hagen, our engineer, did a new uh, data uh, map of all our tax map information. So we were able to transfer the zoning map to a, na a new um, database that's both GIS and AutoCAD compatible. Uh, then we uh, worked with the planning uh, portion of the Pinelands and confirmed that the lines that were uh, proposed in the master plan were consistent with the Pinelands master plan. So from this point on, now that Pineland staff is signed off on the map. Uh, from this point, uh, after the introduction this evening, the map will go to the planning board for review uh, at their first meeting in January, and then come back to you in January 
for second reading and adoption. And at that time, we'll talk about the, uh, the fact that there's one, um, one issue that will require a councilmatic resolution because of a change of activity from the time of the master plan. And uh, I've given you a memo about that, so we can talk about that at the, at the time of the second hearing. So that's, that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Council, is, is there a motion to adopt this ordinance with, in, I'm sorry, introduce this ordinance? Um, the public, public hearing, hearing in January. In January. January. But we haven't established um, a, meeting a, meeting, a meeting date. It could be an issue. <laughs> well, you can, why don't you, well, it's going to be the... I if I may, the, uh, the, the first Wednesday of January is the 6th. The, the one after that should be the 20th. So I think the second meeting of January should be the 20th. So we'll do the 20th just in case. Right. Give you time. We can always adjust it at the next meeting if there's an issue. At the first meeting in January. If there's a and will Mr. Reagan be available for the public hearing on the 20th? Yes. That's what he has intimated. Yes. Okay. Is we could discuss the substance. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to introduce ordinance number 20-20? Uh, no, uh, point of order. Uh, does the public get a chance to uh, this is a mo This is an introduction. I realize that, but I, I thought in the past that it was ahead of chance. That's adoption. Pardon? There'll That's be a, yeah. There'll be a public only hearing. Yes. Pub you get in the public portion of the meeting tonight, when, if you want to comment on the introduction, you can. You can talk about anything. Okay. And if you want to discuss it with uh, the planner, he's obviously sitting right next to you. Um, is there a motion to, to introduce with public hearing on January 20th, 2015? I motion to introduce 16. Ordinance 16. 20 uh, for January, was it the 6th? No, the 20th. 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 The 20th. For January the 20th. Is there a second? I'll second it. Sunshine, please call the council. Ms. Trublet? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Ms. Dinney? Yes. Thanks, Mr. Reagan. It was very nice seeing you. My gracious, mm -hmm. I thought you were going and flying away with the plant. <laughs> but thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Allen? Yes. Nice. Resolutions. Um, first, I'd like to ask Andy and um, administration, do we have any items for um, resolution number 297-2015, which is authorizes council to go into closed session? How about attorney client? All about, about what? Generally? Yeah, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Well, if we could, could you identify just the subject matter of January? January. 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 Oh, um, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear I just wanted a little explanation on what the ramifications of that might be. I think that's what administration is going to be suggesting. Yeah, if that pertains to the letter that council members... Yes. Uh, yeah, we don't object to a closed session. There is, uh, we've received a, a letter from the uh, uh, State Police Chiefs Association attorney on behalf of the chief, uh, whereby there is uh, threatened litigation, and that's the subject of closed session. I have no problem with that. The other litigation matter is I'd like to discuss negotiations for the purchase of 214 Lakehurst Road uh, with the council. Well, I have, a, I have a question on that, then, um, if that's attorney-client privilege. Uh, Andy, where do you stand with that? Don't you, represent, uh, don't you represent the council, and you also represent the mayor? Um, I represent the township, yeah, and the mayor and council, and the, the subject of the proposed executive session is litigation or threatened litigation, so I'm not sure what the issue is. So what if I have a question, I want to question or mention Dave's name or Dennis's name? You represent, how, how do you do that? I mean, I don't understand. How, how are you representing? How? 
Right. I'm a, I'm a, well, the, the so are you going to represent the township? Is, okay. I, I, in the, I'm confused. I'm not, I am the municipal lawyer, general counsel, and the, it's the threat and litigation against the township of Pemberton. I thought it was against Dave and Dennis. Well, even... Okay, so you, you're... See, this is when I'm, I'm confused. I'm going to ask the questions. Would yeah, you fine. say it's simple or stupid? No, it's not. I'm not suggesting any of the above. I'm suggesting that uh, it's a valid question, and I'm not as the I'm not the assigned. If there's no lit actual litigation yet, and I'm not the assigned attorney. If there is litigation as against anybody, it's just threatened litigation right now against the township. And I'm not like anything else. I'm the chief legal advisor to the mayor and council, and I'm comfortable advising everyone on all of it. It's, it's not a conflict, I guess. Well, okay. Well, I don't know. I, I don't quite uh, get it, but I guess... If there's, if there's litigation filed in this kind of matter, the it's either covered through insurance, the GIF, or labor council. Okay, I, d I do so understand that point. Specialist. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I'm just saying, like, yeah. if I have a question, and I would say to you in closed session, you know, um, let me talk about Dennis, and Dennis works for the township. I'm not allowed to do that, am I? So it's against the two of them. This litigation is against the two of them, and they are in the township, am I right? I'm not, uh, tell me when I'm wrong. Don't get me Vinny, hooked this, up this here. This I'm is just. Is why don't we discuss okay. questions and executives? All right, okay. Yep. So will somebody have to pull that? All right. No. Yeah, I don't, no, don't want to get, get wrapped up. I want you to tell me if I'm right or wrong or what I'm supposed to be doing here. Well, it could be. Well, you have the subjects. It could be on the side. I mean, there is a Oh, okay. Um, I keep forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any discussions on the resolutions listed? Yeah, I'd like to pull 292. Is that it, Miss Denny? Pardon me? It, are you finished? Yes, sir. Okay. Don't disturb me. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, am finished. <laughs> Mr. Allen, I'd like to pull uh, 281, 282, and 285. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? 281, 282, and 285. Thank you. It's Mr. Tompkins. <laughs> Can you pull 279? Which is I was, yep. Okay. I'll pull 279, please. Okay, because you can do the rest of the group or something? Yes. Yeah. And then you can pull 297, which is the executive session. Jack, can you pull 292? Oh, 297. The executive session. I thought that's what we were going to pull. I'll pull 297 for the executive session to go into executive session. You're pulling it? You're pulling it? Yes. So we can go into... Okay. Oh. Is there a motion to approve the resolutions collectively that were not pulled? I'll make that motion. I'll second. I'll second. I'm doing that a lot tonight. Hmm? Well, can I have a question? I'm sorry. Well, let's, I, I let's get through this portion, and then... All right, now I'll ask, okay. Because you pulled 297, right, Letha? Yes. So we could talk about it. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so I think it was uh, Letha. Please pull the council. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Trublin? Yes. Ms. Dinney? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Uh, resolution number 279-2015, uh, rescinding resolution... Number 168-2015, adopted July 15, 2015, which authorized acceptance of a Green Acres loan in the amount of $350,000 and a grant of $750,000 for the development of West End Park. Um, Ms. Jackson pulled this resolution. Dennis, could you um, give clarity on that for us? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm pulling it. I can wait till 
I can wait until we talk about it later. Okay. That is later on in the agenda, correct? Uh, I don't yes. Think There's discussion towards the end of the. I meeting. say it. My apologies, but I still had to pull it because. Is, he, because is there a mo DEP. is there a motion to approve that resolution? I make that motion. For two seventy nine. I'll second that. Two seventy nine, twenty fifteen. Okay. Is Mr. Denny seconded? Yeah. Sunshine, please poll the council. Mr. Tompkins. Yes. Miss Denny. Yes. Miss Trueblood. Yes. Miss Jackson. Yes. Mr. Allen. Um, I will abstain from that. Um, <coughs> as the NJDEP is my employer, and the last time I voted on this project, it was out of the law of necessity. Uh, resolution number 281-2015. Uh, 280, Mr. Tompkins. You, you know, these, these are just, this is just a very simple, easy question, and it kind of piggybacks on the same question I'm going to ask for the, the, the very next resolution, 282. Um, <clears throat> what is the cost associated with this? Is there any substantial cost on going electronic? Or is there a big cost savings? As, as, I, as, I, as I recall, I believe it's $15 per line item that okay. is put up for, for sale. Uh, and uh, the, the, the major benefit is, is that it increases the number of individuals and entities that are interested in purchasing the, uh, the tax delinquencies, which means that more of the tax delinquencies are purchased privately, which increases our tax collection rate, which will then allow us to hopefully decrease our reserve for uncollected taxes in the future year. It has a financial benefit okay. because we get paid the taxes right away. Do we still have to uh, do the newspaper filing? It, as a matter of fact, the, the electronic process requires three different uh, publications as opposed to two when you do it okay. physically. So That answers my question, so I'm good. I'd like to make a motion to uh, adopt uh, Resolution 281-2015 and 282-15 because it, it answered both questions. We have to do them separately? Okay. I'll second. Sunshine, please pull the council. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Trueblood? Yes. Ms. Penny? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Okay, and then I had one other that I had pulled since we're, I guess I'm... 285-2015. Yes, sir. Work through them. Um, this looks like a consumption license, and it says in the ordinance um, for Bobby D's. And uh, I drive by there now, and Bobby D's is now uh, owned by the county for the construction project for the 530 uh, expansion. Um, I'm wondering, you know, I, I understand there's a, co a company that probably holds Bobby D's or whatever. Uh, are they planning on putting a new establishment within the township within uh, the next 12 months? I can't answer your Bobby D's question, but the... Uh, yeah, Bobby D's. Okay. Well, they're the owner of the license. No, they're, they're, it's a renewal, and the owner of the license is the Kudan Corp. Corporation. They own Bobby D's, correct? I, that's Look not the impression them. that I got from Amy when I discussed it with her. Sunshine, are you aware of? As far as I know, from what Amy explained, the person who owns Bobby D is no longer the same person that owns the license. Kudan Corporation owns the license. Okay. Bobby D's is no longer owned by the Kudan Corporation. Okay, then this corporation, where are they going to utilize this license? That I do not know. They have to keep it going, or otherwise it would lapse, and then there's, and that's why they apply to renew it. They could open it anywhere here, or that, or right, sell it, or whatever they want to do with it. But it, it, Mr. Connell, if I may, if if they wanted to open up at another location, they'd have to file a new application that would come before council with regard to the specific location. In Pemberton. Correct. In Pemberton. So this doesn't mean that they can open it anywhere. And, and have any kind of establishment is what I'm... If they were to do that, they would have to come before the council on a new application as to the specific location. It, it would be like a place-to-place -place transfer. So like right now, if the license was last held at what was Bobby D's, and they want to move it somewhere else and open up in town somewhere else, they'd have to file a transfer, mm -hmm. right, Chief? I think you one of the things have to file a transfer to the other location, and you'd have to approve it. One of the ABC things you might want to consider, though, is that... <laughs> um, the township actually has more license issued 
than authorized by the statute, uh, which is uh, governed by population, I believe. And if we were not to reissue this license, uh, we could not reapply or reissue another license if someone were to apply. Uh, so this license does have value to where if someone wants to open a restaurant and wants to uh, sell alcohol at that restaurant, uh, they could do so. Uh, and that would be our hopes that someone would use it for that a purpose such as that. But if we were to lose the license as we lost uh, the old, uh, I want to say, Fat Rocks license, we lost uh, Eugene's uh, Eugene's. Uh, restaurant when that burned down they didn't refile we lost that license and there may have been one more uh, but we we can no longer get them back uh, you can't issue them license again okay so this would be reissuing it for a one-year period it would be a, a renewal. Uh, renewal for a one-year period and it's commonly referred to as a pocket license and there's there's a couple pocket license currently in the township and and the council would still have some kind of control on what kind of establishments when, when they came back to the township, obviously uh, they're not going to come back at the facility that that license uh, was currently uh, or previously used at because the county is purchasing that for the highway expansion. So they would have to uh, do as uh, the solicitor had suggested, come in with an application for a place-to-place -place transfer, and it has to be within the municipality. Then they would have to explain just what type of establishment they're going to uh, put that license in, and you know the, the parameters within. Right. And and the, and the, and the police department would review that application yep. and make a recommendation before Correct. coming back here for approval. I've been a resident for the in this town for a long time, and I live over in that end of town. And I know Bobby D's was a lot of people liked to go on there, but there was another establishment there beforehand that. Uh -huh wasn't so well thought of by some residents. Correct. But an example yeah. also, this is the same license that is uh, a pocket license from Annapolis or the Country House. Okay. So we have, again, we have several licenses out there under this same pretense. Okay. That answers my questions. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? I make the motion to approve it. Is there a second? I'll second it. Sunshine, please pull the council. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Stinney? Yes. Ms. Trueblood? <coughs> yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Uh, Ms. Stinney, uh, you requested that we pull resolution number 292-2015. Yes, I did. And that is to the uh, consent of council to engineer's appointment. It's so sad that we can't have the... Um, public to come forward um, and, and make a comment um, before we approve this, but I'm going to make the comment on our engineer. There was a young lady that passed away recently, and um, her dream was to see the dam completion there in Country Lakes. And I want to say this evening that um, our engineers did a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful job informing the residents. <coughs> and this engineer company has um, been like a, a sister-brother relationship to the community. I've seen them out in the community. They sat over there in their chairs explaining to the community what they were going to do next, how they were going to do it, how could they get involved in the different things that were going on. And this young lady passed on, and I spoke with um, her family, and I said to her family, um, few days ago that I was going to make a comment and I'm hoping that Mr. Reagan picks up the tape, uh, picks up the minutes and hears every word that I have to say that we are grateful, we are blessed to have an uh, engineer firm as, Ray, as the um, uh, Mr. Reagan no, sorry, Mr. Reagan's gone. <laughs> Lane, I think you mean Chris Raymond. <laughs> Chris Raymond, that's just who I did. I just said he left. And so, anyway, huh? That's, that's the planner. That was Mr. Chris Raymond. Yes. Chris Raymond is the engineer, correct? Yes. Okay, let's get it right. Yes. Chris Raymond. Don't twist my words. Okay, so let me finish. And I want to say it's sad that he can't sit here this evening and hear um, what residents had to say because uh, they asked me would he be here because they were going to get up and speak on a fantastic job that they have done here in the township.
And so I'm um, relating the information to uh, counsel so that it can be recorded. And uh, we thank, well, I, I say I thank uh, on behalf of the residents here. I'll keep quiet because they're talking, and I don't want I don't want anything to foul up the recording because I want this to be perfect. So you want me to keep quiet for a minute? I will. I don't think it's their their conversation is not being picked up on the microphone. Oh, it doesn't. No. Oh, well then I was told it was being picked up on the microphone when somebody else is talking. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. So I'll finish and I'll conclude that um, I thank that engineer firm on behalf of the family and the wife that passed away. I hope they weren't laughing about the, the lady that passed away. Um, that was her dream to see that um, that dam gets completed. And uh, they did a wonderful, wonderful job on um, the um, dam. So sorry to be, be long, but um, they would have been here to... Um, thank the township um, for a job well done. So that's my comment, and on that I vote yes. You have to make a motion, Doc. Oh, I'll make a motion that we accept Resolution 292-2015. Is there a second? I'll second it. Oh, is there <coughs> Sunshine, please call the council. Ms. Denny? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Mm. Trueblood? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Resolution number... 297-2015 authorizes council to go into closed session. Uh, Ms. Jackson uh, pulled this resolution. There are, as we heard, there are two items um, for closed session. The first being uh, threatened litigation. The second being negotiations for the purchase of 214 Lakehurst Road. Is there a motion to approve, approve this resolution? Or I make oh, yeah. the motion to approve it, yes. I'll second the motion to approve. Sunshine, please pull the council. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Ms. Trueblood? Yes. Ms. Finney? Yeah. Mr. Tompkins? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Council will now go into closed session and will return after our discussion. Council is... Oh, sorry. Okay. Council is back from closed session. Uh, my understanding is we will be adding a resolution to the agenda for approval, um, potential approval. Yes, Council, this would be a resolution 298-2015 authorizing uh, the execution of a contract for the purchase of 214 Lake Coast <coughs> Road, subject to ultimately adopt adoption of an ordinance and subject to availability of funds. This is basically just authorizing the mayor and business administrator to go for, uh, uh, to uh, negotiate for the potential acquisition of this property. As well as investigate. Well, uh, yes, everything associated with it, including due diligence, environmental investigation, anything associated with the acquisition of the property, similar to what you had authorized in connection with the acquisition of the properties earlier this year in Browns Mills. And it does not authorize the purchase of the property? It does not. That would be ultimately authorized, as I noted, subject to an ordinance, and you can only technically acquire property as a municipality through adoption of an ordinance. So this is only sort of a preliminary authorization to proceed and move forward. That's really all it is. Andy, just real quick, um, 214 Lakehurst Road um, is uh, in the redevelopment area. Could you just briefly just give a synopsis of where it is, just briefly, down Lakehurst Road, blah, blah, blah. No? Yeah? Maybe? Oh, you don't know? No. Well, I only don't know. I mean, because I don't know. Where it is? I don't know the number. Dennis the or Dave? The address doesn't. I think the mayor could address that. Jason? The property located across from, from Mayor Lake, the dam. Correct. It's the old Browns Mill Supply at the corner of Lake okay. Road and Junction Road. Right. Across the street. And this is, as you noted, Councilwoman, an area. It's in the redevelopment area. And as a result, the council right. has, and the township has all kinds of powers under the local redevelopment and housing law. To, re to potentially redevelop this property, which is why the uh, mayor is requesting preliminary authorization to uh, proceed. 
Is there a, a motion to add resolution number 298-2015, a resolution authorizing the execution of a contract for the purchase of 214 Lakehurst Road? I motion to approve to add resolution 298. That's a motion to add. To add, I'm sorry. I'll second. Sunshine. Ms. Trubla? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? No. Ms. Denny? Yes, to add. Mr. Allen? Yes. Is there a motion to approve resolution number 298-2015, a resolution authorizing the execution of contract for the purchase of 214 Lakehurst Road? I motion to add resolution number approve. to approve number 98. Boy, I'm backwards today. <laughs> it's okay. All good. I'll second. Uh, Sunshine? Ms. Trubla? Yes. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Tompkins? No. Ms. Denny? Yeah, I forgot to ask one question. This goes over to our business, no, I'm sorry, business administrator. Um, <laughs> Y'all have to excuse me. I'm not feeling well. I came out tonight because I, I miss you guys. But I'm sorry. I forgot to ask the question. This also goes to Dave Benedetti. Am I correct? He's hooked on to this. And yes, he's uh, been in, involved in the negotiations. Okay. Also, <clears throat> and also, Dave, on the plane here, they'll put that on here, correct? They'll change that, put this on here? Because I, I, I didn't see it. No, that won't have anything to do with this the zoning. It doesn't no? change the zoning. It no. won't change anything there? Okay, good. All right, yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Unfinished business. Uh, the review and discussion of the uh, the bylaws. Uh, just to let the public look, know, uh, for those of you have, who have been attending the meetings for the last couple years, um, the last couple meetings we've been operating under a different format for our, for our meetings. Uh, because I had looked at the bylaws and um, the bylaws that were last um, changed or approved, I'm sorry, in 1999, this is actually the format of the way the meeting is supposed to be structured. So until we discuss the, the bylaws, which is tonight, we've been operating um, under this specific order. Council, is there any discussion? Yes, I would like to start, please, if you don't mind. Uh, under the old format, I remember coming on in 2007, and uh, I believe it was through the authorization of the council as a whole that we put the um, uh, comments on the front, and one of them reasons was due to this gentleman uh, here. He made a comment this evening that um, uh, you know, I, I won't be here this long, and sometimes our meetings will go forever. I remember sitting here 11, 12 o'clock at night um, for our meetings, and I understand, you know, some parents, some residents come with their uh, kids and that sort, sort of thing. One of the recommendations I would like to meet, make, and um, Terry can um, uh, vote on, I mean, not vote, but... Uh, comment on this is that we moved those comments back up because to me um, the comments of the public is important to me. I may not be able to get around and hear this, that, or the other, but um, being at a council meeting, it may give me a thought on this resolution, like say the resolution we just passed just a while ago. Um, we would have opened it up to the public and you would have said, okay, well, wait a minute, you know, what about this and what about that? I was just hoping that council as a whole would bring that um, comments um, for the um, public back up under the resolutions. I've checked with several uh, municipalities. Uh, frankly, I, they do whatever they want to do. Um, we do what we have to do. But that's always been my, my theory. Pemberton is Pemberton. But um, maybe if we could consider cutting the comments down, include myself, to five minutes, five-minute comment, and put it back where we 
were, were, were using it uh, so that they can make comments under our resolutions. That's important. It's important to the public. That's what I'm hearing. It's important to me to hear from the public because I don't get to hear from the public. I go to church. I hear that. I don't have time to